afternoon and welcome to the show. I'm Deacon John Blehosh. Topic for today's show is going to be service to God. And the person I have as a guest is going to be Bill O'Connor. Welcome, Bill. Thank you, John. Yeah. And uh, when I was deacon at uh, Sacred Heart Church for about 22 years, they closed in uh, 2004. I received an assignment to work across the river in uh, the Diocese of Manchester at All Saints Parish, which comprises St. Peter's, St. Joseph, and also St. Catherine of Siena. Of course, you know St. Joseph's, they closed. I was older for about 12 years, and then after my contract had run out, and also because of uh, health issues, I decided to take a senior deacon status, which means I'm a retired deacon. And I came back to my home parish, which now is uh, St. Charles in Bellows Falls. And I noticed that uh, being a church, one individual is kind of hustling around doing all kinds of things, lighting candles, uh, helping as an usher, serving mass, and also being Eucharistic minister and doing different things which are also behind the scene. And I said, that's the person I wanted to interview to find out exactly what is his love for the church and why he wants to do all this. So I thought I'd talk to Bill and see, uh, give me an idea how you got involved in all this. Well, let's, uh, I probably just go back too far. I'm a depression baby. That's okay. And uh, it, uh, so it was probably about 1940 when I became an altar boy. And mm -hmm. I still do it occasionally. Even today we had a funeral for a lady. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, rather interesting. But I've always had a feeling for the church. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the nuns and we got a beautiful education. And uh, it worked out good. The nuns, I was told, worked for $25 a month. Right. And St. Charles, uh, back, I was reading some of the history, and in the 30s, they educated 300 students there wow. before uh, the international paper and other big outfits here in town went out of business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And even while I was going through uh, St. Charles, uh, there was about 180 to 200. Right. The town of uh, Rockingham didn't have to pay a nickel for them. Right, right. So it was great. But mm -hmm. we had, uh, that goes back to Father McMahon's time in the 40s. Right. And then I've uh, had a little working with some of the priests over the years, mm -hmm. uh, mainly serving and stuff because as... Things changed and kids went on to high school. They weren't available right, right. Uh, to serve, so you couldn't pull somebody out of the high school. Right. And I've kind of kept my finger in it for all these years since, mm -hmm. on occasion, whether it was in the service or right. whatever. Or and now we're down to uh, just one set of servers, some young ladies who do a beautiful job on Saturdays, mm -hmm. and a brother and sister that uh, serve on Sundays. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, Alan Johnson does most of the serving on the weekday masses. Right, right. So it's a, a big problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't have the people coming along like we used to. It's, Correct. We've discussed there's a generation gap, one or two of them, where my generation were fading from the scene, were just right. getting too old and dying off, mm -hmm. and uh, there's no way to step in and take our place, that's and that's right. one of the gaps. Mm -hmm. I feel like I say, I'm 85 now, yeah. and so there's four generations I've gone through, and each one changes, That's right. each one thinks its own way. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, religion is not on too many minds. That's right. I agree I agree there. And I know that you're talking about serving. I know that when I was eligible to become an altar server, uh, back in, was in 1954, I think I started. And uh, after I received my first Holy Communion, I was seven years old, that was a chance to become an altar server. Yeah. And the thing is, is that uh, I thought it was great. I thought, to me, it was a privilege. Oh, yeah. uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, even, I know sometimes as a deacon, when... I was at some masses when there wasn't a server I had to do the actual serving. To me, it brought back a lot of memories of, of being an actual altar server. And, uh, but today, kids don't, just don't have the interest in, in, in a dedication to the church like they used to. And I know there's so much extracurricular activities in their lives that to some kids, church isn't important. Unfortunately, uh, there's going to be a way that we can show some of these people that uh, church has to play 
a role in people's lives. I mean, uh, there's a reason for this bill, and I think that uh, we have to educate uh, some of these adults to show them that uh, not only they, but their children have to come back to the church to, uh, uh, you know, to get what they're missing, what they're lacking. Uh, Father Ernie Passero, when he, was, he told me, he says, don't worry, he says, in the end, they all come back. And I, I can see it. I've seen people grow older, and all of a sudden, they're going to daily mass mm -hmm. and all week long, mm -hmm. as uh, and even like myself in my thinking, uh, as I mentioned to you, uh, your time on earth here is actually a speck of sand in the middle of the beach. That's right. And uh, what, 70 or 80 years if you're lucky, maybe mm -hmm. more. There you go. But uh, what you're going to go on to is eternity. Right. And I believe. A big majority of the people all believe in God, mm -hmm. and uh, they may think of it differently as you do. They may go to a different church, but they're going to go to the church they were brought up in, correct, in the proper environment, mm -hmm. and uh, we're all speaking to the same God, correct. But we do it in different ways. Different ways. So it, it's very tough today because right. most churches, you see, are fighting for survival. And That's I mean, right. I, one thing I said to myself, especially when Father Maria came here, he's doing a beautiful job. He is excellent job. The St. Charles is not going to go under while I'm around. That's right. That's right. And yeah. uh, you see him even now, the bishop is closing up churches around. He doesn't have the priests. That's right. And it, it, it's very, very tough. So tough. I don't know the answer. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully as we go through this rough period, Eventually, it'll swing back the other way. Right, right. Now, uh, you said that you uh, you spent some time in the service, correct, Bill? Pardon? You spent some time in the service? Yes, yeah. I was in uh, from 53 to 55. I was fortunate. The Korean War ended while I was in basic, and sure yeah. enough, they shipped me right over there and up behind the TMZ. Yeah. When we come in in Incheon, there's Russians there counting us as we come in. Yeah. And I was in a... Uh, self-propelled field artillery, an eight inch self-propelled gun right behind, about 10 so miles behind the DMZ, right. not even that. Right. And then I shifted over to uh, the 145th when that one closed up on mm -hmm. 155 artillery. Yeah. And uh, so I really had it good there. Yeah. Nobody shot at me. <laughs> You're looking uh, here. They, so the Chris going to ask you is that even while you were in Korea, how did you uh, how did you uh, cope with your your religion? How did you? Uh... I always made mass every okay. week, wherever yeah. it was. Yeah, I remember one clear uh, the first Christmas Eve I was there on nineteen fifty four. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it's fifty three because that was when I got in there, and I missed the. They didn't have church everywhere. You had to go up to the next uh, battery there to go uh, to church and right. I overslept and I missed the truck mm -hmm. and here I am up in North Korea and I went out walked up the road and it was as peaceful as could be mm -hmm. a nice moon shining and the road was clear I just walked up there went to my mass and came back home mm -hmm. and if the priest needed uh, some help uh, on serving mass I would serve it mm -hmm. and there was a Father Finley uh, from Missouri, and he came over to me when my uh, gun section, we I had them all, we had the gun all turned in, and he needed a driver. Mm -hmm. And uh, he says, can you drive a Jeep? I said, sure, I can drive a Jeep, but I haven't got a license. <laughs> he says, you see that cross? It's better than stars. <laughs> and he had six bottles of altar wine mm -hmm. that... Uh, all the officers were trying to get a hold of him. He yep. was going to take him over to a mission in Inji. Mm -hmm. So I drove him around for about two weeks, and we mm -hmm. went over there, and he took the wine over to a Father Lynch. Mm -hmm. And Father Lynch came from Ireland, and he would spend seven years in Korea, go home for a year, come back for seven in Korea, go home for a year. Wow. And it's the only time I ate off of dishes and not a, pl uh, a tray. Yeah. And uh, he had some nice... Blended tobacco, rum-soaked. 
that <laughs> I enjoyed because yeah. I was smoking a pipe then, which yeah. I no longer do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I stuck with it, and as things have thinned down to St. Charles, where we don't have many altar boys, especially yeah. during the week, right. I will slip in maybe on a, a wedding or a funeral like yeah. I did today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, so I mm -hmm. fill in, or mm -hmm. I tell I only have one set of uh, yeah. altar thankful. There are altar girls right. in the family. It was three of them. They're down to two. Yeah. But they come and serve them every week, and Good. occasionally they got a miss. I says, don't worry. I'm there at the Saturday yeah. Mass. I'll take it. Right, right. How, so, much, how much influence do you think your your parents and your and your uh, your family had as to your religion? Uh, well, way back in the 40s and so, mother stayed home and ran the house. Father did the work. Mm -hmm. And you had the full family. Right. You had mealtime, breakfast, dinner, and supper. Mm -hmm. And you sat down. Uh, I was never pushed on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in the 40s there or so, you either went to benediction on Sunday afternoon. That's right. Or you had to explain to the nuns on Monday why you weren't there. They weren't there, right. So right. you went, and yeah. it was a whole different ball game. Yeah, it was. Religion, it was. I mean, you'd been through World War II. Yeah. And you were happy to have uh, the whole country survive. That's right. And it uh, made a heck of a difference. Mm -hmm. And you were there, and... There was all kinds of altar boys, so maybe once or one week in a month you did your serving. Right. Uh, back there in the 40s and even into the 50s, mm -hmm. uh, in the winter, to save on fuel and stuff, right. they had the masses over in the convent, which is long gone now. Right. right. They could hold 40 or 50 people. Right. And they had a 515 mass for the people that worked at 7 in the morning. Wow, wow. And I'd go up there and yeah. nuns took good care of you, bring you in orange juice and make sure <laughs> you'd stay, you'd have the 515 mass yeah. and stay for the 7. Yeah. I, I know what you're talking is that, uh, you know, when I started, I started in the 50s into the 60s and uh, I can remember we had a Sacred Heart maybe 10, 15 guys, yeah. you know, they rotated. And I know when I got to be uh, eighth grade and then the high school, we used to do daily mass at seven o'clock. Yeah. And, you know, I grew up in North Walpole in, uh, on Main Street. And it's about a mile from near the Sacred Heart. And I could walk that bridge in January, colder than heck. And I remember being over to the sort of mass. You know, yeah. And then going to uh, uh, Rita's or Billings at that time to have coffee after mass and then head to high school. But uh, you know, like I say, I mean, Altar serving to me was 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 uh, it was great. I mean, and the guys that we, the group we had, were servers were excellent guys, and they all took it to heart, you know. Oh yeah. And 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 like you talk about about benedictions, we used to have, uh, in Advent and Lent, we used to have uh, ben, uh, services. Like in Advent, we had the uh, uh, evening prayers, and uh, Lent we had the lamentations. And then we had the Stations of the Cross, we had benedictions. In May, we had the Marian devotions. All that was there for the people. Yes. And we had the servers that were there, too. And and, uh, and, I, and I think, like you said, I think that post-World War II, a lot of people were happy that how the survival and that things turned out the way it did. And yeah. uh, But I don't know, but the churches were filled at that time, Bill, and, and oh, the people yeah. were there, and I think that they appreciated all this. Yeah. I think that sometimes people become too complacent because of the fact that uh, when they got easy and things are going good, God doesn't mean anything in their lives, and and, and all of a sudden they back off. Yeah, I know that after nine one one, after the uh, the tragedy in New York, churches were being filled again because of what happened. But then now it's changed again. Now I wish that it didn't have to. Some kind of a catastrophe didn't have to happen in order for people to see that church is important to them. Yeah. You know? Well, in the service, I, I learned that priests were human beings as well as priests. Well, they are. They are, uh, yeah. Because uh, I remember we had to go down the 24th Division headquarters when we were finally going to get shipped back to Japan. And I went yep. down with Father Finley there. And there was a father, I believe, Sullivan from Boston there. Mm -hmm. And they tossed us a six-pack while they went over. And the, they had uh, enough booze there to put a good bar to shame. Yeah. And they were there, <laughs> and I could hear them off to the <laughs> side talking. Yeah. Yeah. And I said... Yes, they are. So I, yeah. I took and I said you should help them out. Yeah. And I remember uh, when we had the benediction in Sunday afternoons and 
Father McHugh, who was the assistant, that was the late 40s, and St. Charles, he yeah. comes in and he says, uh, who's got benediction today? I says, you have at 3 p.m. Yeah. He says, no, I haven't. Go get that book. He says, I'm going fishing. <laughs> and he took the book, chased his name in it, put Monsignor Burke down for benediction after the 10 o'clock mass. <laughs> <laughs> so it's... Uh, yeah. They were interesting. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I mean, like I said, they uh, they are human, and and that's why I think sometimes when people look at them, they have to realize is that they do what they can do with the grace of God. Yes. And to help all people the way they can, and uh, it take it takes a real strong life in order to be a priest to dedicate yourself totally to to the church and and yes, and, and to not have other things that married men have and, and and things of that nature. So there's a real strong dedication there. Yeah. Unfortunately, the vocations aren't like they used to be either, and that's why we don't have the uh, the priests like we had. And uh, then again, that goes back to people want to be selfish or selfish, and that's that's the yeah. key to it right now. And uh, unfortunately, this country is being uh, covered by third world priests from India, Africa, and even uh, some people from uh, po priests from Poland and, and Ireland. They're coming over here to help out because of the shortage. Thank God we got them. That's right. exactly exactly. That's the, that's the key to it. Unfortunately, it shouldn't have to be that way, but it, but it is. Yeah. And 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 like we we're talking about Father Marie. I mean, he's a very dedicated individual. And yeah, he and, uh, I think could uh, the head of his order that started it died here back about six months ago. Right. And I think when Father Maria goes home for five weeks each year, he could easily uh, take a high place in his order. I think so too. Uh, yeah. He right now he just had two priests come in uh, from his order. Uh, one's up in Hardwick. Mm -hmm. The other one is going to be the assistant down at Brattleboro. Correct. And he was up today for uh, Mrs. Soboleski's funeral. Right. I met right. him. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Father Maria I think is very well liked and he I think has been in charge of any of them that come into Vermont. Right. Finding right. places for them and exactly. getting them settled. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I know talking with him uh, over, he's come over to visit on occasion or even like that, that uh, he's a very educated guy and, and I know that he could easily be in charge of the order and whatever as, as the uh, superior and things like that. But uh, we're glad to have him and I hope that once his 10 year contract runs out, he signs up for another one. But Stay, me both. Stays in Bellas Falls. I like that very much because, yeah. I mean, I've got to know him very well. And, uh, uh, you know, there are very few priests out there who are really dedicated to, to their vocation. He can speak three or four languages. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize that in India they go with about uh, five different uh, dialects right. and stuff. And I think Hindi is supposed to be prominent. Right. But... Uh, I know when he comes here occasionally he'll he'll talk he can talk with his men. He had oh here about five or six years ago there was twelve of them from India mm -hmm. here in the country and they all came here right. uh, for a weekend with him. Right. And uh, he he was running things mm -hmm. down there and uh, they they do a tremendous job and they uh, I'm amazed at how fluent he is in English. Mm -hmm. He is. And if he so. misses a word, he'll check it out afterwards. Yeah. And uh, does a tremendous job with it. And when he gets up there in the pulpit, you can completely understand him. Yes. And same way with uh, when he's on the mic. Yes. The thing is, is that coming from a country, what amazes me is that is that Catholicism in India is not a, a large religion. Yeah. One of the small, I mean, uh, you know, Hindu is the biggest religion over there, and yeah. then you got a couple of then you got then you Catholicism, and and to come from a country where uh, you know you're almost like persecuted for your religion, yeah. to to have that much faith and, and, and belief is is amazing. Yeah, there is uh, roughly about a hundred million uh, Catholics in India, uh, and what you don't realize is that uh, not sounds like for well, this country, wow. Yeah, but India is over a billion people. That's right. Yeah, and they're a very small minority. That's right. I'll, I'll Although the, he says, the population, yeah, yeah they're yeah. making a lot of the holy days holidays over there now, yeah. and it's yeah. gradually coming in. Yeah, yeah. And uh, when Father Maria flies home for his annual leave, mm -hmm. uh, twenty-one and a half hours right. to get there. Right. He goes 
from beautiful jets to buses to walking to get to his house. Right. And he's down the southern end of India, right. uh, about 90 miles from the ocean. You have that heart shape, and he's down the lower down end of that heart. Right. Yeah. And he, he's from a very poor section. Right, right. He mentioned that. And uh, like I said, we're lucky to have him, and that's the main thing because of what's going on in the world today and in the church. And so, uh, yeah. Uh, but to get back to you, I mean, like I say, I was very, I'm very impressed with, with your service and dedication to the church because uh, we need a few more Bill O'Connors around to help uh -huh. out. And, and uh, like I say, I mean, you're willing to do anything, anytime. And the stuff behind the scenes, like I said even before, that not only the uh, doing the usher or light candles or being the acolyte or, or Eucharistic minister, uh, uh, you, you sometimes you count money and sometimes you, uh, I can remember back we had confirmations where you'd be in the kitchen, you and your wife and, and your friends, the Griswolds, would be cooking cooking meals. <laughs> and so, like I say, you, you've done your share for, yeah. for the parish. So, on, light, on lighting candles, I've been banned from the high candles up the ladder. My legs are pretty shaky yeah. and I my balance is poor. So And my wife has too many spies, so I can't slip up. There, there. you go. There and so I, Father Maria has to go up and light the five stars for him. Yeah. Go up and light the candles for him. And I can get all the lower ones. Well, I appreciate you coming on, Bill. Well, I've been happy and, to be here. And like I say, uh, I really enjoyed this, and uh, I hope the people that watch the show do get something out of it. So I do, too. For my listeners, until we meet again, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill.